Now today's video um, is a little bit graphic in the primary source that I share. It's about a rather nasty execution. So I just wanted to give you a warning. If you're squeamish, you might want to listen or you might just want to listen to a first bit and then fast forward right to the end. Uh, that's your choice, but I just wanted to warn you as I know that not everybody can cope with hearing these really awful uh, execution accounts. Thank you. Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of several Tudor history books. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, unfortunately, something bad happened on this day in Tudor history, the 25th of March, 1586, in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. This was Good Friday and also Lady Day, the Feast of the Annunciation. And Catholic martyr Margaret Clitheroe, nay Middleton, known as the Pearl of York, was pressed to death at the toll booth on the Oosebridge in York under seven or eight hundred weight. She was executed for harbouring Catholic priests. Now, the following information is taken from a talk I did for the Tudor Society on the rather cheerful subject of execution methods. Yes, great talk. Margaret Clitheroe had previously been imprisoned for helping and harbouring priests, hiding them in two chambers, one connected to her house and another in another part of York. Margaret refused a trial by jury as she didn't want her children to be forced to testify and possibly tortured, so she was automatically sentenced to death. Her family and friends claimed that she was pregnant with her fourth child, but Margaret would not confirm it. In his Life of Margaret Clitheroe, Margaret's confessor, John Mush, writes of her martyrdom. The place of execution was the toll booth, six or seven yards distant from the prison. There were present at her martyrdom the two sheriffs of York, Fawcett and Gibson, Frost, a minister, Fox, Mr Cheek's kinsman, with another of his men, the four sergeants, which had hired certain beggars to do the murther, murder, three or four men and four women. The martyr coming to the place kneeled her down and prayed to herself. The tormentors bade her pray with them and they would pray with her. The martyr denied and said, I will not pray with you and you shall not pray with me. Neither will I say amen to your prayers, nor shall you to mine. Then they willed her to pray for the Queen's majesty. The martyr began in this order. First, in the hearing of them all, she prayed for the Catholic Church, then for the Pope's holiness, cardinals and other fathers which have charge of souls, and then for all Christian princes. At which words the tormentors interrupted her and willed her not to put Her Majesty among that company, yet the martyr proceeded in this order. And especially for Elizabeth, Queen of England, that God turn her to the Catholic faith and that after this mortal life, she may receive the blessed joys of heaven. For I wish as much good, quoth she, to her majesty's soul as to mine own. Sheriff Gibson, abhorring the cruel fact, stood weeping at the door. Then said Fawcett, Mrs. Clitheroe, you must remember and confess that you die for treason. The martyr answered, No, no, Mr. Sheriff, I die for the love of my Lord Jesu. Which last word she spake with a loud voice. Then Fawcett commanded her to put off her apparel. For you must die, said he, naked as judgment was given and pronounced against you. The martyr with the other women requested him on their knees that she might die in her smock and that for the honour of womanhood they would not see her naked. But that would not be granted. Then she requested that women might unapparel her and that they would turn their faces from her for that time. The women took off her clothes and put upon her the long habit of linen. Then very quietly, she laid her down upon the ground, her face covered with a handkerchief, the linen habit being placed over her as far as it would reach, all the rest of her body being naked. The door was laid upon her 
her hands she joined towards her face. Then the sheriff said, Nay, you must have your hands bound. The martyr put forth her hands over the door still joined. Then two sergeants parted them, and with the inkle strings which she'd prepared for that purpose, bound them to two posts, so that her body and her arms made a perfect cross. They willed her again to ask the Queen's Majesty's forgiveness and to pray for her. The martyr said she had prayed for her. They also willed her to ask her husband's forgiveness. The martyr said, If ever I have offended him, but for my conscience, I ask him forgiveness. After this, they laid weight upon her, which, when she first felt, she said, Jesu, 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 have mercy upon me, which were the last words she was heard to speak. She was in dying one quarter of an hour, a sharp stone as much as a man's fist put under her back. Upon her was laid to the quantity of seven or eight hundred weight at the least, which breaking her ribs caused them to burst forth of the skin. Thus most victoriously, this gracious martyr overcame all her enemies, passing from this mortal life with marvellous triumph into the peaceable city of God, there to receive a worthy crown of endless immortality and joy. This was at nine of the clock, and she continued in the press until three at afternoon. And that was the awful end of Margaret Clitheroe, who's known as the Pearl of York, a really, really awful way to die. Now, the 25th of March, Lady Day, was the start of the calendar year in Tudor times. And I'll give you a link to last year's video in which I explain all about that. You can subscribe by clicking round about there, and please do. And you can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live, which is on a daily basis. And you can give me a like and leave a comment. Thank you for joining me. Bye bye.